Today's scripture comes from New Testament, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13. As I read through the passage, I hope you can hear the voice of the living God. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what, is, what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. Amen. Our senior pastor, Sonny Kwok, once shared with us a story in his sermon. The story goes like this. A millionaire put an advertisement on a newspaper saying that anyone who thinks they are truly content with their life and can prove this will be given a million dollars. When the set date has come, a large number of applicants has come. Each of them explained why they were happy with themselves. And they came up with many reasons. But no one was able to win the million dollar prize. This was because no one could give a definitive answer to the millionaire asking if you are truly satisfied with everything why are you here and what do you need why do you need my million dollars for and nobody was able to provide a definitive and convincing answer to this question Today's scripture talks about self-content. It means we are satisfied with ourselves. The meaning is the same in the original text as well. Wouldn't it be great if we can be satisfied with what we have? How happy one's life can be. And this is something that everyone would wish for. Are you self-sufficient? Well, if you do so, then your life is truly full of quite a lot of things. Rockefeller who is known as the richest person in the United States, is famous for what he said when someone asked him, how much wealth will satisfy you? And his answer was, just a little bit more. And no matter how much wealth you have, the richest person even the richest person say that they need just a little bit more. This just a little bit more mindset is known to be the very reason why people end up losing all they have at the gambling site. There may be times when the gamblers do well and hit the jackpot but gamblers are hard to please with what they earned because their goal was to earn a lot of money. So even if they do make quite a lot of money, they end up losing everything as they crave for just a little bit more. Don't we have this kind of mindset as well? we oftentimes crave for just a little bit more. For those who have purchased a small house, want to have a small building this time. 
and small building owners now wish to have a larger one. So we oftentimes crave for just a little bit more. We easily find plastic surgery hospitals in Gangnam. There are, of course, people who seek plastic surgery due to illness or a severe wound. But there are those who choose to undergo plastic surgery simply because they are not satisfied with their appearance. First, they have their eyebrows fixed and then eyes, then nose, and then face lines. But no matter how many times they undergo such surgeries, they are hard to please as they crave for just a little bit more. But no matter how much we want to avoid, we all get old and weary in the end. Who can ever be satisfied with their appearance? Perhaps even a celebrity admired and loved by so many people may find their appearances not satisfying. Maybe that's part of human instinct or instinctive mindset. And that's something that's deep-rooted in our mindset. And maybe we can say that it's an outcry of the human desire. The society we now live in is full of uncertainties and severe competition. It is hard for everyone to live a relaxed and comforting life. Someone who say they would be content with 100 million won just a while ago now say that that's not enough. In fact, most of us know that this kind of life makes us only miserable. And we are all aware that we cannot keep on living this way and actually wishes to escape from this kind of life. There are, in fact, some people who give up on everything and decide to live in a countryside to do farm or to live a rural, to live in a rural setting. There is a TV show called I Live in the Nature. My mother enjoys watching the show and at first I was not sure why she likes such a program. But as I watched the show along with her, I felt as if I was living in nature, enjoying the minimal life myself. And I kind of thought that it provides me a second-hand satisfaction. So since I cannot live in a nature, so by looking at how others live, I kind of feel the second-hand satisfaction. There are also many books or special lectures on how to control one's mindset wisely. There are also those who try to control one's mindset through meditation, physical or mental trainings. These kind of trainings also help. And these kind of mindset trainings do help. Instead of just living a life full of greed and lust, it is better to manage one's body and mindset through such trainings. In fact, even as ancient times as when the Book of Philippians was written, human desire was the same. People during then wished to have peace of mind and a wish to control the excessive greed and the desire. And they thought that self-content and 
controlling the excessive greed and the desire was one way to have the self-content. The word self-sufficiency or self-content in today's text is the word was actually a philosophical term used by Stoic philosophers at the time. Epicurus, for example, asked, what is the meaning of life where our lives are in, in uncontrollable needs for worldly possessions, unclear goals and processes? He then suggested how to search for happiness by escaping from such circumstances. He then suggested that we need to control or we need to manage the ever-growing needs for life's basic necessities. And he suggested that we need to train ourselves to match what we have with what we need. In other words, it is a way to find satisfaction by focusing on what we already have. He called such a status of mind arthoraxia. He said that it is a true pleasure and happiness. This can be the, the origin of what the young generation of nowadays calls a minimal but a satisfying life. It can be a good way of living, and I wish people can find happiness through this. In fact, such approaches do make us feel happy to some extent. And such approach can help us, but it has a kind of side effect because this kind of life focuses on present status only. And since their focus is just lies in the present, they prepare less for the future. And it can also be uh, selfish because the self-content somehow only focuses on oneself, not for the community or people around you. And we also find us ourselves swayed around from here to there as we face or encounter so many realities and life circumstances. However, in today's text, Apostle Paul referred to the concept of self-content used by the Greek philosophers and provided a somewhat different perspectives. In fact, the situation where Apostle Paul is placed in is somewhat awkward to use the term self-content. He is now in prison. To some extent, one can say that Paul was self-content even if he was in prison. But when seen from the context, we can see that he received donations from the Philippian church members, and he is now saying that he is grateful for the gifts. In the verse 10, it says, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. So first, Paul receives the donations sent by the members of the uh, Philippian church and expresses his gratitude. And although they wanted to do so from so much earlier, but didn't have the opportunity, Paul then says it was good that they did so even if it was a bit late. 
It sounds as if Paul had been waiting for a long time to receive such donations. But to prevent any kind of misunderstanding, Paul goes on saying that, as in the verse 11 and 12, that I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is uh, to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Paul said he learned to be content. In other words, he says that he can live alone without their donations. But he added a few more words, probably to prevent any other misunderstandings. In the verse 14, it says, Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. So to summarize up, what he meant was he was happy when the Philippian church members sent him donations. He knew they would do so, but he was not waiting for such donations. He already knew how to be content with any kind of circumstances. But it is good that you sent uh, me such donations and were willing to help my ministry because in doing so, they became partners of the same mission. And then comes the words most cited by Christians, which is as in verse 13, it says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Sometimes we misunderstand this text. If we just take this sentence out and look at it separately. Because in many times we mistakenly interpret this sentence as we can do anything with God's power or that we can achieve all our desires with God's power. So such interpretation can be possible if we do not read this text in, in a larger context. If God gives me power, what wouldn't I do? If Almighty God, the creator of this world, gives me strength, there surely is nothing we cannot do. So such interpretation is not entirely wrong. But when seen from a larger context and considering the circumstances where the speaker is placed in, um, such interpretation is incorrect. We need to first look at the background where the Paul is placed in. Paul is not saying that he can fulfill all his desires with the power of God. Quite opposite is true. He is saying that he also has human desires and lust. He wishes to eat well, live better, and have more. He also has just a little bit more mindset. But he knows that such desires would not make him happy. So he says that he has learned to be self-content. And he tells us that the secret of being content comes from God. He says that I can do all things through him who gives me strength. So what Paul would like to tell us is that our Lord 
the master, the creator of this world, is the one who gives us the ability to be self-content. The true and sincere peace of mind and the self-content comes from God. And that is something that our God gives us. Well, in that case, is there nothing that we need to do? And our Paul would like to tell us uh, what we need to do. We need to focus on one word, and that is, as in verse 11 it says, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. So we need to focus on this word learned. The original text, original language of this word is matano. Paul says that he has learned to be content. He implies that he learned to be sufficient from our Lord. And he mentioned that he learned it, learned to be self-content from our Lord. He did not say that he it was from his own enlightenment or through his own knowledge or understanding. But he said that he learned and he acquired to be self-sufficient and then that the learning came from our Lord. This is important because Paul is not saying that he was enlightened or he was knowledge enough to realize such a secret. He's saying that the secret to self-content came from our Lord. The God was the one who taught him such a secret. And in Matthew chapter 11, our Lord says that, as in verse 28 to 30, that come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. To those who carry all the burdens of life, the Lord has told them to come, take my yoke upon me, and learn from me. He told us that there is a secret to lighten the burden of our lives. Then, what's that secret? Paul must have learned a way to be self-sufficient, and that came from the Lord. So let us find out more about the self-content that he learned from the Lord. Interestingly, the self-content that Paul learned from our God was in connection with the words right before today's text. As in verse 9 of chapter 4 of Philippines, it says that whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and God of peace will be with you. So we can find out that the word learn is used in verse 11 and 12, as well as uh, today's text. And they are all interconnected. And so, so far, we have found out that Paul knows how to be self-content, and then that learning was came from our Lord. And he would like to add how we can practice that 
self-content in our daily life. And he explained it in the four different ways. So let's first take a look at the first four uh, of the same chapter. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. So Apostle Paul tells us to rejoice and always rejoice and try to be happy in every situation. And how does it work? Now, how can we practice that in our daily life? It means to look for conditions that make us happy in any situation. So it means that we need to acknowledge that there is a good will of God in every situation. Then we can rejoice in whatever circumstances that we are placed in. And in verse 5, he says, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So the second of the thing that we need to practice to be self-content in our daily life is to have a generous heart. And what we can do here is just to remember that we don't have much time left. If we can remember that we cannot take everything with me when we die, then we can have a generous heart. In the book 1 of Timothy, verse 6, it says, But the godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we'll be content with that. So we need to be wise enough to know that the end is coming, and we need to understand that we cannot take everything with us. We then can be tolerant and generous. And that's another way we can practice self-content in our daily life. The third way uh, we can do is from the verse 6. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with a thanksgiving, present your request to you. So we need to have a strong faith that our Lord is with us, and He is the one who guides our every path. So the fourth way, is from the verse 8. It says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So, the secret to self-content that God gives us through Paul is not to escape from reality and it is to rejoice in reality, to be tolerant and pray without concerns and to live with what is right, true, sincere and righteous. And if you can practice these kind of these ways of living then we can be self-content uh, as given by our Lord. So we can say that we can live with the self-sufficient the given by our Lord. True happiness is grace of God. We need to have a strong faith that our Lord gives us self-content and a true peace of mind and true blessings. In the verse 9, it says, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The peace of true self-content is a blessing from the Lord. 
and it is a true self-content we should all enjoy. Today, shall we all practice the self-content that our Lord gave us? So let's all be generous, let's all pray, let's all rejoice, and let's all walk the righteous path. And then may our Lord give us the true satisfaction and peace of mind. Let us pray. God of love, thank you for giving us your precious words. We take it as wisdom of life. Please enable us to have true peace of mind and self-content. Whether we are rich, poor, sick, or healthy, let us rejoice and thinking that it is your good will on us. Please enable us to rejoice and be grateful and pray and practice generosity. Please enable us to enjoy the true peace that the Lord gives us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.